six national titles, 35 College World Series appearances, 71 conference championships. Throughout its rich history, the Texas Longhorns have represented the pinnacle of college baseball in the Lone Star State. Strike him out, it's over! Texas has beaten Florida for the national championship. But in the past decade, Jim Schlossnagel and the reigning Big 12 champion TCU Horn Frogs have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with their Austin adversaries. The Horn Frogs are going to Omaha. TCU wins it, and the Horn Frogs sweep Texas. Can Texas turn back the clock on TCU? The next chapter of this rivalry starts now. A gorgeous evening, although being a little cool and a breezy, but it's time for conference baseball as the TCU Horn Frogs visit the Texas Longhorns. Good evening, everybody. Keep rolling along with Greg Swindell. On Tuesday night, folks, Texas made some changes. It is that part of those five seasons that you have in a real season as Conference K was coming this weekend. They made some changes. Good things came out of Tuesday night. Yeah, good things came out. They moved the infield around a little bit. Cody Clemens went to shortstop. Zane Gerwitz came into second. Trace Barrera making a start at third base. It seemed to work out. Nothing uncomfortable for those players. They'd played those positions before, and tonight, we also have Tyler Rand back in the lineup in center field. Well, you do look at that, and on the other side of it, TCU, one of the best teams in the country. There's no question about it. And when you look at it, they bring a lot to the table, but mostly they bring <laughs> an excellent player in Luke and Baker. He's a two-way player, folks. He's a DH and pitcher. Yeah, he's a big man. He'll be starting for TCU Horn Frogs tonight. 6'4", 265 pounds. Has a little moves with him, too. But he also has a good fastball. He has excellent command of his off-speed pitches as well. His changeup and his slider are very good, and he's very powerful at the plate. He will be the DH if he comes out of the game after pitching this ballgame. Well, their leader is Jim Slosnagel. He was the Big 12 Coach of the Year in 2015. When you look at Baker, and this is for Coach Slosnagel, he's got an excellent offensive club. You can see he's been an outstanding coach in his time at TCU, and his club, very good in the middle, especially the four, five, and six hitters. They are real productive. Yeah, four, five, and six is where you get your run production. You've got to take care of those guys at the top. TCU, a very fast team with stolen bases. There's big Luke and Baker right there. And they're going to be facing Morgan Cooper for the Texas Longhorns out all season last year after his All-American freshman year with Tommy John surgery, making his fourth start of the season. His first on a Thursday night, the first game of this conference opener against TCU. You can see the numbers there, Greg. He's, he's only walked five. I think his command's been really good. He's been downhill. He has earned this spot, in my opinion, to be that guy that leads you out to start a conference series. And this is none bigger than this one. You've got the preset pre-season Big 12 champion, so to speak. Everybody thinks TCU is the team to beat. You get them at home to start conference play. It's been a struggle here in the preseason. And it's a great way for Texas to come out and establish themselves and say, hey, we're going to be around to compete all season long. Yeah, they want to do that with, with Morgan Cooper on the mound. It's, it's been his goal to get healthy and get back for this game right here and continue to improve. He's done that each start, command the curveball. It's a big pitch for Morgan Cooper. And with the speed of TCU, you've got to be able to keep those runners close. Austin Wade will lead it off. He's a sophomore from Midland. First pitch of the ball game in there for strike one. On the season, he's done an outstanding job. 378 has Wade. It's a transfer from Hill College. And the 0-1. Off speed on the ground to Barrera. Bobbles comes up with it in time to get the out. No panic there. If you're just tuning in, didn't see our game on Tuesday night. Barrera moved over to third in that ball game. Made every play, makes this play as well. This is a little tricky play because it squibbed off the end of the bat, kind of spins down there the trace. It comes up a little bit, but finds the handle quickly and throws the runner out. Connor Wahanen steps in. He's a sophomore from Flower Mound. Outstanding freshman campaign. He can set the table. 6'295 pounder. Freshman of the year in the Big 12 in 2015. The 
command of that fastball early. That's two very good fastballs we've seen on the outer half by Morgan Cooper. Just getting back into the lineup for Connor. You miss a guy like this when he's out of your lineup. Aldolf out of play. You mentioned it, a little bit different look for Texas in the outfield. As Tyler Rand back in the lineup, and not only is he back in the lineup, he's in center field. It'll be interesting as the ball game goes on to see Patrick Mathis over in right field looking up into the sun. Speed downstairs in the count evens. You can really set the tone if you're Cooper here. Go out and throw a zero up here and see if Texas can get something going. They would love to play with the lead. There's no question about it. That would put some pressure on TCU. It out in the center, coming on quickly as Rand calls for it. So far, so good. Two guys in the lineup. And Different positions, both of them make a play for the first two outs. That was a good read off the end of the bat from Juan Hannan. Tyler read that ball good. A lot of times an outfielder will take a step back with the swing, but Tyler read it and came in good. Scout comes to the plate. This is an excellent player, Evan. Hitting 333 on the year. He's got good power, only one home run to this point, but he can hit the ball of the ballpark. So he'll take a swing. He takes a healthy hack when he's in that box. He does lead the Horn Frogs in doubles with 11, slugging at a 565 on the season. It's been a good changeup, something we haven't seen a lot from Cooper. He's used it, but not as much as we've seen it here early. You know, this TCU team likes to swing the bat, and early on, a good pitch for him because it looks like the fastball. The 0-2. Climb the ladder. The 1-2. Comes back with a fastball again. Good fastball, 93 from Morgan. Cued off the end of the bat. A roll foul. I'm sure they will throw that ball out. That may have taken the end of the bat off. These aluminum bats have a cap on the end of them. You can see that cap is gone right there. You catch it out on the end. You have to go get a new one because <laughs> there is no repairing it. Kind of like just splintering of a wooden bat. Well, it doesn't hurt near as bad, because I can guarantee they sting, especially on a cool evening. The 2-2. Two -two. Got him. Outstanding top of the first for Morgan Cooper. One, two, three, go the Horn Frogs. Texas coming to bat. 48th season for head coach Augie Garrido, his 20th here at the University of Texas. You can see he has the more, most wins in college baseball history. Coming out to start conference play, his lineup looks a little different even than it did on Tuesday night, Greg. You see there at the bottom, Tyler Rand back in the lineup, but Brett Boswell in the lineup as the DH tonight. He's still trying to get that bat going. Yep. Struggles in the field a little bit for Brett, but I'm going to try to keep that bat going, and it'll start at the top with Travis Jones and Cody Clemens facing the big man for TCU, Lucan Baker, freshman out of Spring, Texas, 6'4", 265. He's had a good start to his freshman year, making his sixth start of the season. Just the 26, just averaging right at five innings a start. He has a power pitcher, but he knows how to pitch. He's got command of a slider. Throws a good change up. And for a big man, you got to be able to field that position well. Let's well, there's get... so many things about him that are just amazing. He was the 2015 Gatorade National Player of the Year. 
made an appearance at the ESPYs. That's big time stuff right there. It is. So he is a young star and he's off to an outstanding start as Greg told you. He'll be facing Travis Jones, the softball from Humble. Travis steps in. It's been a good start to the year for the sophomore. Back in at the first one. Fouls it back. I would think when you see the numbers that Baker puts up as a hitter, I'm thinking I got to go attack him. So I'm going to swing early. I'm not going to set and get myself in a lot of two strike counts. He's got a very good slider that he likes to put hitters away with. So if you can get ahead of him before that, another fastball to Travis right there. All the pro people that I've talked to that have seen him all talk about his mound presence, that he's a guy that gets it, gets ready to go, doesn't seem to get bothered. The 2 good morning, good afternoon, and good night. So three pitches, and Jones is down on strikes. This fastball right down the middle, right at the knees. Good pitch. Travis obviously looking for something else right there. Cody Clements will step in. Clements on a tear. Average up to 259. It's been a good stretch at the plate over the last five to seven ball games for the so for the freshman, excuse me. Playing shortstop tonight. Playing beyond his years right now. It's smooth and easy, isn't it? It is. I mean, it doesn't even look 92 miles an hour because it is so smooth and easy. Gets up on you. Right One and two. He's just, he's just pumping in the fastball right now. Well, it's not easy to see. It's not easy, even though the shadow and the the lights are, are not on at this point, but this is bright sunshine. The outfielders having a tough time and still coming off that bright backdrop. You can tell right now, pitchers have an advantage. You saw that from Cooper. On the ground, out to second. Warner has it. Two quick outs for Texas. So far, just every everything right over the top. Fastballs from Luke and Baker. The third baseman for Texas. Repeat that again. He's played there the last couple of ball games and done a good job. And see the numbers. Got his first big fly on Tuesday night against UTSA. For the first time, Baker falls behind the hitter. There's slider. He does have command of, of his off-speed pitches. Talking to Coach Schlossnagel before the game. So he can be a power pitcher, but he's, he really knows how to pitch. He understands how to pitch as a freshman. We've seen so far is uh, him using the fastball and Greg I think you try to establish the fastball if you got a good one oh, establish yeah. it early well, it keeps base hit to left elevated that one and Barrera has the first base hit by either team in the ball game and two out single when you establish your fastball early early especially the first couple maybe three innings it just keeps your opponent from seeing your secondary pitches elevated that's what you need to do this big man make him get that ball up Tress with a single to left Patrick Mathis will step in sophomore from Waco in right field tonight 298 on the season good backdoor breaking ball to start him out for strike one Back 
to back and quickly out front 0 2. It's ahead of your time so to speak for a true freshman to have it to see him have that good feel to that breaking ball to the back door. It's, it's a, it's, it, you're exactly right. It's, it's a field pitch. Just misses there with a heater. This is close. Oof. Not sure I can take that with two strikes. Fouled it off, and it remains one and two. Patrick Math has taken that pitch because he's thrown him two consecutive sliders, painted one outside and threw a good one inside, looking for another one. Tricked him with a fastball, but didn't get the call. Good at bat going on here for Mathis as he fights off another one. 18th pitch of the ball game coming from Baker here now. Breeze is coming in from left field. Tough to get it out in that direction. It might go to right. Ball hit crisply on the ground right at the first baseman. And Baker will lead it off as we go to the top of the second. Nothing, nothing. Morgan Cooper making the conference opener start. You see the numbers four and two of 289. Big 12 All-American team and missed all of last season with the Tommy John surgery. Rehabbed it and he's come back and he's really pitched well at the beginning of this season. 19 strikeouts in the 18 innings. Good numbers and see the pitch count each time gradually increasing. The first appearance in relief and then three straight starts. 62, 80, 91. I imagine we'll see him push up to that 100 pitch limit tonight. 13 in the first. And he retired all three batters he faced. And Luke and Baker listed in the lineup as pitcher D8. So he can re be removed as a pitcher and remain in the game as the D8. So that's the way he's listed in the lineup. The freshman from spring. Cooper challenges him with the fastball and their first strike. I think the first one that comes to my mind is the pretty good pitcher DH. Longhorns had for a while, Brooks Kieschnick. Yeah, he was outstanding, no question about it. Ooh, that hurt. Caught Michael Cantu right off of the right shoulder. There is a pad there, but that hurts. See Baker even asking him if he's okay right there. That's a breaking ball over the plate. Right on that point of your shoulder, even though that's only about a pad, about a half inch thick. And it looks padded, and you say, oh, he's okay, but that hurt right there. Might have some ice on that one when this is over. 0 2 to Baker. Out towards center. Hit well. Going back is ran, and Baker shows you how good a hitter he is right there. It's that ball right on the button and one hand off the bat. Yeah, he was fooled a little bit on this pitch. Just off the hit the sweet spot, but one handed it. That ball's on a line about 380 feet. So just off the plate towards, towards the end of the bat. And yeah. Doesn't come off till the end. Ball jumped. Watson steps in, tries to bunt. Watson's been a, a clutch hitter. That's the reason he's hitting in the five spot on the order. He's driven in 10 runs with two outs on the season. Over the top of that one. Josh is a freshman from Arlington. Out to right, hit pretty well, carrying right at the edge of the track. Mathis has it. We said the only direction tonight we thought the ball might get out of here is down that right field line, and that ball carried a little bit. The wind blowing much.
much harder earlier during batting practice than it is, than it is now. And that ball just caught off the end of the bat and carried just in front of the warning track. Cooper's filling it up right now. Eight consecutive pitches in the strike zone. As Barzelli steps in. Elliott, junior from Los Angeles. Has he had a start to his year? He's been tearing it up a little bit. I'm telling you. <laughs> Elliott for the Horn Frogs got the game winning hit against North Carolina State last year in the regionals that sent the Horn Frogs to the Supers. Just continued it. 12, 12 multi hit games this year. He's got 34 hits. He's hitting 447 as he steps in. His on base percentage is 477. Slugging 750, and his OPS is 1227. And two straight curveballs from Morgan Cooper <laughs> let you know that the Texas knows the start he's had. Challenges him there. Ties him up with a 93 mile an hour heater. Well, he's just had an outstanding start. Confident, seeing the ball. There's so much to hitting that is confidence. Chases a high one, pops up. Wind may blow it. Tough play, looking over as Clements, able to surround it, put it away. Six in a row retired by Morgan Cooper. Texas Baseball on Longhorn Network is brought to you by Whataburger. Bite into something new. Introducing Whataburger's Buffalo Ranch Chicken Strip Sandwich for a limited time only. Shots of Jordan Speed, Roy McElroy, and the Pennybacker Bridge as the Dell match play takes place at Austin Country Club. A busy weekend here. In Central Texas, we've got baseball, Big 12 style, right here at UFC Dish Fog Field. Greg, you and I both got a chance to go out to Austin Country Club yesterday and catch a little sun and see some outstanding golf. Well, what a beautiful setting it is over there on Lake Austin, Austin Country Club. It's good to see that they can make errant shots as well sometimes, but yeah, saw, for the most part, I it was Jordan and. Roy hit it in the water yesterday. Didn't make me feel too bad. Of course, they both made pars out of those. Right. <laughs> Where it turns into double bogeys for me as Casey Clements steps in. Five, six, seven, due for Texas here against Baker. Well, right now, if I'm a Longhorn, I'm going over there hunting fast while I'm ready to swing when I get in the box. I, th I like you. Know, you got to be ready because he's, he's throwing plenty of them. That was a good bender in there for a strike, but I'm still thinking, just like you, I'm first fastball I can see. I'm going to make sure I'm ready to get the barrel out in front. One and two to Casey. Ooh, back off his hand, back up the middle. Two guys collide. Are they okay? They did have a collision. I'm not sure if Merrill hit his head, I believe. I'm not sure what he hit it on at the end, but Baker. Reached up with his bare hand. That's never a good choice either. No, it's a reaction thing. You just want to stop it. You can't stop yourself from doing it. You see right here, it goes up with that bare hand. It looks like it hit his hand. And then all of a sudden, both infielders diving towards each other and just kind of hit mid body. They're going to go out and Danny Wheat, trainer for the Horn Frogs, will go out right now and check on his pitcher. <laughs> We're worried about Lucan right now. We'll get you infielders in a minute. They both seem to be in a little bit of pain. Ball hit off Baker's hand on the way up the middle. You'll see right here. He puts his hand up and it hits him right there. Ooh, that could have been much worse than it was. Warner got up quickly, but he's the one that might have taken the biggest blow. Merrill both okay. It looks like Baker's okay as well. But it's an infield single. Texas has made a, a living in infield hits in the last couple of ball games. That's the sixth. After six against UTSA, that's the first here tonight. So that's seven in their last two ball games. 
throw over. Ball gets away, but not far. Boswell, the DH tonight. Redshirt sophomore from Rockwell will be bunting here. Got to get it down here. Got to execute. TCU doesn't do it very often. Texas does it a lot. TCU relying on some power. Pulls it back. Jeff Hendricks, the home plate umpire. Bill McGuire at first. Jim Garman at second. Mark Lewis of this Big 12 crew. And the opener for Texas, TCU swept West Virginia, which has got a good ball club last weekend in Fort Worth. They're off to a great start in conference play. Bunted up the third baseline. Marzelli does his job, and so does Boswell. Ninth sacrifice of the year for Brent Boswell. Texas on Tuesday did a very good job of getting runners over via the bunt. And tonight, a good job right here to have the opportunity with one out and a runner on second to take the lead. Michael Cantu steps in. Has hit the ball in his last 10 at bats, I would say six times on the button. Doesn't have a lot of hits to show for it, but you can tell he's starting to make more consistent contact than he was earlier in the year. He has struggled with runners in scoring position this season. He's two for 12. He's got a chance here to give Texas the lead. Breaking ball in there for a strike. I, I tell you, it really made a difference when they turned the lights on. I mean, it, it, it has helped the shadow without a doubt. Plus, the shadow is linked, but lights on now has helped around home plate. There's no question. It seemed that there was a, a glare coming off the center field wall, too. Sure was. 0-2. Oh, so we've seen Baker, Luke and Baker, with the ability to get the slider over, but also wasted like he did right there. Knows how to pitch. You can yes. tell that already. <laughs> Can get it over now. Now it's in the back of your head. He can get that pitch over it. Now you see it, and it's a ball in the dirt, and you can't hold back. The one two. Just misses with a fastball. And the count evens. His misses haven't been by much. Pretty good pitch. Clements leads from second. Got him. Reach back. Good old high hard one and got him. Second strikeout for Baker. Seems like he did. He wanted that called strike. Got a little upset. Puts a little something on the next one to Michael Cantu. That brings Zane Gerwitz to the plate. Sophomore from San Antonio. Going to take a two out knock now for Texas. Breaking ball popped up. Right to the wall, runs out of real estate. Pretty good hack. It's an idea there for Gerwitz. He was looking to go the other way with that breaking ball. That was that other way swing we've seen him have. That's a good approach. Now as a hitter, you don't know if it's the hard one or another bender. And quickly, it's 9 for 31 with runners in scoring position this season. That is the most opportunities of any Longhorn player this season. His 32nd chance for the runner in scoring position. 
on the ground back up the middle Merrill to his left hurries not in time infield knock second of the inning for Texas. Another ball just hit right up over Luke and Baker soft enough. Gerwitz hustling all the way down the line just in front of the throw you'll see right here he's on the bag there balls in the glove. It's a good call. Another infield hit. Well the first at bat since the Stanford series for the freshman from Cyprus. He was three for five with runners in scoring position before he was injured. Broken bone in his wrist and back into the lineup. This is the batting gloves he has on now has a protective padding in between the, the glove leather. Foul back out of out of play. I believe the sun is right hand it's the guy who won the job Greg in the outfield in the left field was off to a good start when he was injured dynamite pitch there and quickly it's one and two Breaking ball back at the middle diving nice play does he get in time not in time and Texas has scored. Great hustle by Zane Gerwitz Texas gets the lead. Yeah you credit that hit right there and the run scored RBI everything to Zane Gerwitz he knows there's two outs. Ball again not hit hard ball not leaving the infield but the hustle right here of Zane Gerwitz getting to that bag ahead of that toss right there. Puts Texas on the board and a base hit and RBI for Tyler Rand. Third infield single of the inning and Texas has a one nothing lead. Four hits now in the game. Right now, as a pitcher, you're going, man, just hit it hard somewhere. Hit it at someone. They're just finding the holes. All three have been right up the middle. This inning. Almost in the same spot. Exactly. Could be thinking also if those middle infielders, when the little collision they had earlier in this inning, oh, might no have doubt. something to do. Kirk Sarlo so out now to talk to Luke and Baker. Well, he's done a good job since he's been at TCU. He's had some outstanding pitching staffs. Lost a lot of pitching to the draft last year and now back this year, and they haven't missed a beat. It's still all about what happens 60 feet six inches away. Baseball is got to have those guys on the mound do their job. The Horn Frogs have been excellent at that this year and over the last really 10 years. The 1 0 chop foul. And the count evens. And you replace an All American closer two years ago. Brandon Finnegan leaves pitches in the World Series same year. that same year College World Series and the Major League Baseball World Series in the same year Jones three for ten with runners in scoring position An opportunity here he has reached base now in 15 consecutive games leading into today still has to reach in this one to make it 16 front door breaking ball quickly it's one and two double barrel action in the TCU bullpen here in the second inning surprising to me one two downstairs over 40 pitches now 41 to be exact for Baker. Twenty five in this inning. Ball hit 
crisply to center, but right at the center fielder, Steinhagen. But Texas gets on the board. Three consecutive infield singles lead to a 1 0 lead. Texas and TCU, they've hooked up almost 300 times. Texas dominating the series, but a lot of that happened before the last 10 years. Since 2009, you can see both of these clubs have made three appearances in Omaha. Played two Super Regionals back-to-back -back years and two great Super Regionals, each team winning one, but TCU has dominated in the last 12 appearances that these two teams have hooked up together. Those two head coaches know each other very well. Jim Slosnagel's done an outstanding job for the Horned Frogs, and of course, Texas' Augie Greedo in his 20th season here at the University of Texas. Ryan Merrill will lead it off. He's a junior from Omaha. He's reached in 11 straight games. You know, he would love to make an appearance at TD Ameritrade ballpark used to be Rosenblatt but was, you know the new ballpark's nice but the old one was great old one had nostalgia it did it's a 1-1 one, one. TD Ameritrade is very fan friendly very nice ballpark great venue another change up and a good one from Cooper who's got a, an excellent change up here tonight he's retired all six horned frogs he's faced so far in the ball game the one two to Merrill on the ground, back up the middle. Clements to his left, to his older brother. One gone, seven in a row, retired by Cooper. And we talked in the opening about the moving of positions. Cody going from third to shortstop. Well, he was a shortstop in high school. He's playing third base at the beginning of this season. For Brett Boswell playing shortstop, but now it's, it's nothing new to him to be out there at shortstop. Cam Warner steps in, he's a junior. Originally from Australia, as he steps in, good offensive player. He's been an outfielder a lot in his career, moved into second base this year. You can see he's a big guy, 6'2", 190 pounds. He's got a nine-game hitting streak as he steps in here. They're starting to play good baseball in the outback. There's a few... You know, the Olympics going over there, Greg, years ago when they played the Olympics, and I think that really moved baseball ahead in Australia, there's no doubt. Trying some back-to-back -back curveballs. Find that a little odd when you've had the good fastball and the good changeup. 30 pitches now for Cooper. This is upstairs, first three ball count of the game. And I think that's important for both of these guys, for both Baker and Cooper, is attack the zone. You've got good stuff, Greg, attack it. They both understand how to pitch. When you get, give hitters enough counts and hitting counts, they're gonna, they're gonna start hitting the ball. So you avoid three ball counts and get, put them away in three or four pitches. Yeah, 2 -oh, 3 one I'm yeah. a good I'm a I'm a good hitter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna look for the fastball and I'm gonna square it on him most of the time. Payoff here. Ooh, that one it's second time in the ball game that Michael Cantu has that one got under his, his left collarbone and then got him in the ear. He's he's a tough young man. You'll hear it right there. It stings you. It's like getting punched, Greg. It <laughs> just like that's mask. It's got padding. You can see all the padding, but it stuns you. Second time in the game, he's been dinged up a little bit back there. Payoff again. Seventh pitch of the at bat, longest of the game for the Horn Frogs. Pop to left. Coming on is Jones. Travis able to put that away. He did not look as <laughs> no, didn't. confident right there. I think because it was so high. That ball was up there for a while. You keep drifting because the ball kept drifting more towards center, and he drifted right along with it. Good thing he put two hands on that one. 
Dane Steinhagen will step in. That was the fifth fly ball out for Cooper, who's a fly ball pitcher. I mean, when you got a good fastball, you, you're going to get some balls up in the air. He's showing a good, good fastball down in the zone like that. But after he gets ahead of him, he's throwing that rider up in the zone, and it's tough to, to get on top of. And that results in pop flies. He's retired eight in a row now. Seven of nine hitters. He's been it out in front. Quickly, he's way out in front here, 0-2. Dane Steinhagen, you might remember the last name. Brother Landon played here for a couple years, Did. a few years back. They were both from Beaumont. The 0-2. Morgan really put a little into that one, trying to put him away with a sharp breaker. Falls off a little bit, ball backed up on Always hear Skip Johnson, trust your stuff. Don't you start overthrowing, you start hanging, you start missing spots. Came he right stayed, back with it. Stayed with that one right there. A good call by Michael Cantu to come right back to that curveball. Mor Morgan Cooper strikes out Steinhagen. The horn's coming up. The Big 12. Diversity. Is what I would call that. <laughs> been, the title has been shared. Five different winners of the Big 12 over the last five seasons. That's regular season. Obviously, there's the Big 12 tournament that goes with that. But Conference TCU's been right at the top in those last five. If they haven't won it, they've been right there. Especially in the last three since they've been in this conference. Cody Clements 0 for 1 as he steps in. Greg, you made a observation in watching and looking at Baker's times. He he really has been a five inning pitcher so far. I'm not sure the, the reasoning why, but I guess it's about the fifth inning. Five starts coming in in 26 innings, so just just a smudge above five innings a start. I don't know if they want to not have him throw so much or have him fresh as a hitter for the rest of the weekend. The one-two. His first game of the year, was six innings, he only gave up one hit. That's his longest outing of the year. The one two to Clements got him upstairs. Second strikeout actually the third for Baker. He gets him with a high fastball. Barrera got ahead in the count singled his last time up. Good pitchers will can continue to eat the. You, you talk about waste wasting fastballs sometimes he, he's not wasting fastballs these pitches. Are about eye level over the plate, tough to catch up with. And as a hitter, you when it's over the plate, you see it. Herrera couldn't get on top of that one that time. It's been a good junior campaign for Barrera. His power numbers not as good as I think they'll get before the end of the year, but he's been consistent offensively. Ripped off of the glove of Brazelli. Picked up. Throw is high. Got to get back to the bag dives in time. That was close. If you make that turn as a young player, you got to make sure that you can get back to the bag. Barzelli just couldn't come up with it. It's right under his glove. Throws high. It looks like it hit over that padding. But I think the ball has to go in the dugout. I think over that padding may be if it, may be awarded second base. We'll see what the call is here. It clears over the padding but doesn't go in the dugout. Take another look at it right here. He's going to give him second base. So it throws high. It, does, it hits, hits off the padding and then off the cement. 
comes back in play. Ball was hit crisply. Marzelli ricocheted it to Merrill, and Merrill just tried to wind up and make the throw, and too much on it. That's a tough gig right there. I think it would be a double e error. It's a two errors on one play. E5 on the misplay, and then E6 on the throw. Mathis comes to the plate. I would think since Merrill fielded it and threw it away, that would be the error. Popped up left side. Out of play. Two miscues on one play, but I think it may be base hit E6. But if Merrill's throw is on time, he's out. He's out. One and one to Mathis. Big hack comes up empty, and it's one and two. It's been a struggle at times for Patrick with runners in scoring position. See the numbers there. And I think eventually when Patrick Mathis starts hitting, you'll see Tress's home run numbers go up. You'll start seeing more pitches to hit because you don't want to, if the guy behind you is batting better and hitting for power, you don't want to get to him, so you get better pitches to hit. Absolutely. Two and two to Mathis. On the ground, back up the middle for a base hit. Barrera, rounds third. He will score, 2-0 Texas. Nice job by Patrick right there. Texas with four hits, and four of them have been right up the box. Fastball over the plate, right up the middle. Taking advantage of the miscue. Fifth hit of the ball game for Texas. Second with a runner in scoring position. It's 2-0. Clement Singleton scored his first time up. Baker's last outing went five against West Virginia. They gave up four hits, three runs, just one earned through 92 pitches through five innings. One one to Casey. This could be two. Merrill to second, relay to first, high, but in time. 6-4-3 and a beauty, but not before Texas. Takes advantage on the Mathis base hit after the throwing error. Morgan Cooper tonight for the Longhorns. Pop fly. Pop fly. Those pitches were down, but Morgan Cooper's been getting the fastball over the plate and then getting the ball up in the zone, and which is resulting right now in five flyouts through the first three innings. TCU's been held scoreless in the first three innings for only the third time this season. They have been an outstanding offensive club, and Cooper's retired all nine Horn Frogs he's faced so far. Back to the top of the order to Wade. Austin grounded to third his first time up. It's good location with Morgan's night. Fastballs away. Changeups have been down. 
in the mound presence too. I mean, he showed it his freshman year, and we have we didn't get to see it last year, and it hasn't gone anywhere. The presence of Morgan Cooper on the mound goes a long way. Two one coming again, riding that high fastball as a hitter. You see it, Greg, and you just can't get on top of it. Just had saw the five fly ball outs that we showed you coming into the inning and a lot has been set up with the good change up tonight. You see it up and you want to hit it. But you can't catch up with. It. Just missed there and the count goes full. Only the second three ball count for Morgan Cooper. Look at the angle on this pitch. The ball comes out and it's going like straight down a downward angle. Miss there. First base runner of the ball game is a leadoff walk here in the fourth for Austin Wade. Only the sixth Morgan has given up this year. One handed will step in. Connor. You look at Wade, he's four for four. TCU does like to run, Greg, on this season, 35 of 39. Michael Cantu behind the plate. Looking forward to this series because he's been exceptional at throwing runners out. Morgan has to really concentrate right now. First time he's thrown out of the stretch tonight. Retiring the first nine batters for TCU. Opponents are three for eight in the stolen base department with Cantu behind the plate. It's four outside of the zone in a row for Cooper. Let's make that five. Seems to be a little quick going to home plate. Three one in there for a strike. Good time to run, even though you're down two right here. Cooper thinking right along with me, if you're going to run, 3-1 is a good count. Anticipating your hitter to swing at a strike. Going. Foul back. That's just the book, the baseball book is your Looking at it and managing, you say you always want to try to put that guy in motion. And two reasons. One, put some pressure on the defense, and the other to stay out of the double play. I would run again here, three two. Should be a fastball. One hundred and twelve strikeouts on the season. He has been injured, so he's probably trying to get his eye better back at the plate. He's a good offensive player trying to get going. It's his first action in Big 12 play. There goes the runner. Hit on the ground, back through the box into center. Wade on his way to third. Here comes the throw to third. Offline, not in time. TCU with something going here. Runners at first and third. First hit of the ball game for the Horn Frogs. Three-two pitch. By Cooper, the runner off. Tyler Rand made it a little closer than expected. Little throw off line, but now TCU with first and third, nobody out, looking for a double play ball right here. Cooper had not had a three ball count. Three out of the first, the last four hitters have had a three ball count.
Runners at first and third. Pitch right down in the bottom of the zone, and that's important to get ahead right there. Oh, it is. I mean, you put yourself in a hole right here. Like you said, with the three ball counts, very important for Morgan Cooper to get ahead. Strikeout victim is last time up. Quickly, it's 0-2. Two fastballs. I think he climbed the ladder right here. Scalga is a very good hitter, a very aggressive hitter. Try that one up. If you don't get him to chase, maybe the breaking ball back door. After that, wide base. Looks like he'd be a guy that'd be tough to change speeds on because he doesn't have a lot of movement in his stance. Now that fastball by Cooper, the last one, thought was almost by him, and he was able to get the bat through the zone. The 0-2. Breaking ball, nice job by Cantu to keep it in front. And it's one and two. Longhorns would exchange the run for a double play ball right here for sure. Definitely want to get an out right here with Luke and Baker on deck. Breeze has almost died now, Greg. So approach sunset. This ballpark plays big, but that breeze starts to sit down. The ball will start to carry now. This ball hit well to right. Going back as Mathis is carrying three run homer. And it's a three to two ball game. Just talked about the fact the win had really laid down. He tried the fastballs. Got away with one. Wasted a breaking ball. This fastball here was just right. And Evan Scoggs wheelhouse. Fastball low and in. Yeah. Scout. Knew it. Right there. Knew it. Second of the season. RBIs 15, 16, and 17. And just like that, TCU out in front 3-2. Baker steps in. We saw the, the numbers with the sacrifices, Texas with 30 and TCU with only three. That's why they rely on that long ball. 18th of the season for TCU. And it was a big one. Only their second hit. One and one to Baker. Takes that heater and it's one and two. Got to keep grinding. If you're Cooper. Ball hit pretty well to center. Ran on his horse, can't get to it. It's going to go for extra bases into the corner. The wind pushed that away from Rand. He got his shoulders turned, couldn't catch up to it. Second extra base hit in a row. Baker into scoring position with nobody out. It wouldn't have been an easy play, but when you get twisted around as an outfielder, a little breeze that it is did push that ball over. Tyler Rand had an idea when the ball took off. He stepped back to his right, and the ball kept fading to his left. When you take a drop step as an outfielder, you always try to take a drop step to the side you think that the ball's going to end up. He took a right drop step instead of a left, Greg, and it ended up he had to reverse his field. And couldn't catch up to it. Sixth double of the year for Baker. Also a little unfamiliar. Fill me out with that word. Unfamiliar, unfamiliar territory. With, with center field, exactly. That's the 19th straight game, folks, that TCU has had at least two extra base hits. The inning still continues with nobody out. Josh Watson's freshman from Arlington steps in. 
He flied to right his first time up. Texas has out hit TCU to this point. Five to three, but two of the three hits for TCU for extra bases. Texas with five singles. Misses again downstairs. Dangerous pitch coming here. The 2 0. Catches the outside corner. Greg, you mentioned it. This has been an outstanding offensive team. And let's look at that right there. 18 times this season, they've scored four or more runs in one frame and won at bat. And they average over eight runs a, a game. 23rd pitch of the ball game coming right here, and still nobody out in the inning. Many times we talk about it. No matter what level you play, leadoff walks. Pitch count now elevated for Cooper. Third time in the ball game that Michael Cantu is taking one off the shoulder of the mask. He's tough. He's tough back there. This one right off the side of the mask, right at the bottom. Knocks it off. Takes the punch and gets back up. The tools of ignorance. <laughs> Trust me, I wore them a long time. You get, you think as sometimes you get back and say, "Why am I doing this?" Third time in the game, he's felt it. Um, Cody Clemens, I'm not even worried about what Luke and Baker's doing out there at second base. And Morgan Cooper, worry about that hitter. Luke and Baker doesn't have any stolen bases. I don't think he's going anywhere right now. Well, this is a gigantic pitch here. Fourth three ball count of the inning for Cooper. Speed fouled away. 3 2 change. But it was up. He was fooled, but the ball stayed up. Able to handle it, foul it off because it was up. A laborious inning for Cooper, and he still doesn't have anybody out. 30 pitches in the frame. Downstairs, second walk of the inning. Michael can too. Sometimes it's not easy to be behind the plate. The first time off of his shoulder. That's your throwing shoulder. The second time off the right hand side of his mask. So that gets your right jaw. And this one, oh, by the way, let's let's hit it again. Let's work on the chin. Barzelli steps in. Elliot. Popped up his first time up. The junior from Los Angeles. It's an opportunity for TCU to break this thing wide open. I don't think they would be bunting. First pitch in there for a strike. It's been a fantastic start to a junior campaign by Barzelli. I don't know anybody in the country's got better numbers than that right there at this point of the season. turning point of the game right now. Nice job by Cantu to keep that in front. The way this game has started, Greg, I don't think either one of these starters 
you're looking much past the fifth. No, a lot of a lot of pitches for Morgan Cooper this inning. Close to 70. Matched his total this inning. Just foul down the left field line. Elevated fastball right there. Turned and ripped down the left field line. Hitters are always meticulous with their gloves. Set to go now. Just missed downstairs and it's two and two. It's a good pitch and a good call. Let's see Morgan Cooper tonight. First three innings, perfect. No runs, no hits. Three walk, three K's, no walks, only 38 pitches. This inning alone, three runs, three hits, and 32 pitches. And two walks. Set again, the 2 2 to Barzelli. Chopped on the ground to third. Pereira steps on third, fires across offline. Nice job by Clements. To come off, knock it down. It's going to be tough to get two on the play, but the first out of the frame for Texas. Play by Tres to get that first one at third base. Didn't come in for the short hop, stayed back, set himself up to make the throw. Merrill grounded to short his first time up. From the left side. Great job by Cantu to keep the double play in order right there. Zane Gerwitz really struggling, putting his glasses on and off at second base as he's looking right into the sun, trying to worry about the throw from third. You can see him right there say, keep that thing down. Keep the ball low. Good change. The count evens at one and one. Cooper's got to feel like he's been out there for five innings in this frame. It's been a long one, but I mean the first three innings for him on the mound went fairly easy. Another good job by Cantu to keep it in front. It doesn't seem comfortable in the stretch. Seventh batter of the inning for the Horn Frogs. Can't go back out again if you're Skip Johnson. You've already been out there one time in this frame, but this is a nice job by Cantu. Or Barrera needs to come over as for a third baseman. He knows it. For nothing else, cardiovascular. Right. Give that guy, give him a chance to take a blow. I mean, you're just not used to standing out on the mound and throwing 40 pitches in one appearance without having a break. It's been a long inning. Hit pretty well to right, but playable for Mathis. He has it. Tagging on his way to third. Could be a close play, but in time. Sliding is safe. Is Watson. Risky. Now, I'm not sure that, that was a play that he would think about doing again. Second out of the inning as Warner comes to the plate. Warner flied to left his first time up. Huge lead at first from Barzelli. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball. Good, a, bit, a good one to go on. He's five for five on the season. Stealing bases. TCU does like to run. That's a gigantic lead. He had both feet out on the green section of the carpet.
back to back breaking balls and quickly it's 0 2 now watch for some type of play from Jim Schlossnagel right here you could have an early break something of that nature they've got good speed on the base pass here good time to disrupt the rhythm 40th pitch of the inning coming here for Morgan Cooper. He does go a fouled away. You don't see many 40 pitch innings. Goes again. Got him with a high fastball, and the inning's over. Not before the damage done. As the Horn Frogs put a three spot on the board with a three run homer and take a three to two lead. Thursday night baseball with Easter weekend coming. Texas plays tonight, tomorrow night against TCU, and Saturday afternoon as everything's moved up today. Good crowd here on Thursday night. Enjoying a crisp evening. Down in the low 60s, high 50s by the end of the ball game. First pitch to Boswell misses upstairs. Baker with his first lead, Greg. We were talking in the break there. Makes a difference sometimes. Now, what's it going to be like with the lead when you take them out? How, how will he be? He was on the, the long inning. In between innings, he was on the bases for a while. How it will affect him. First two pitches out of the zone. Gets a strike right there. Brett sacrificed his first time up. The DH tonight. Behind that fastball and the count evens at two and two. The Boswell can two and Gerwitz. Texas trailing for the first time in the ball game. Misses back door. Count goes full. Greg, you talked about it earlier in the broadcast where he, he does such a good job of, 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 of knowing where to deliver the ball. It may not hit his spot every time, but right there. If you're going to go 3 2 fastball, tie a guy up after going back door with a breaking ball. This is a good idea. Him, him and Evan Scow right now have a good plan going. And that right there is how it's been going for Brett Boswell. That's ball four and check swing. The ball hits his bat. Would have been ball four. They have, they have a good game plan. He doesn't try to get outside himself and overthrow. On the ground to Sharp. Merrill has it. Offline. Boswell with a leadoff base runner. Second miscue of the ball game for Ryan Merrill. Uncharacteristic of TCU. Had 19 coming into this ball game. This throw just sails on him. Juan Hanen unable to get it. Looks like a little two seamer. Michael Cantu probably asked to bunt here as he steps in. He was a strikeout victim his first time up. Texas in the second got the leadoff guy on, bunted him up into scoring position, and it led to a run. Throw over. Cantu does square. Sometimes that throw over, Greg, is call from the bench. Let's just make sure he's bunting. Yeah. We'll see. See how the hand movement is on the bat. Michael shows early. Takes a strike right at the bottom of the zone. And it's 0 1. The three miscues in the ball game. Season high for TCU came in with a 978 fielding percentage. The numbers look good coming in. Three miscues here tonight already.
Texas needs to take advantage of it. They did last inning. Got a run out of it. See if they can do it again. Couldn't get the bunt down. There's a balk call. But yeah, you know, I think Evan Scout came out in front, and Michael, Michael unable to get the bat. Catcher's interference instead of a balk. I can honestly say I've never seen catcher's interference on a bunt attempt. You see it right here. Not sure that I saw any contact there. But a break for Texas. That is also the fourth error of the ball game. As Cantu is awarded first base, he's not charged with a plate appearance, but it goes in your scorebook if you're keeping score as E2. It looked like the contact came after the ball had been fouled off the bat of Cantu, and then he hit the glove of Evan Scout. Bunt situation here for Gerwitz. Bunted it up the third baseline. They're going to go to third, not in time, and they're loaded for Texas. Barzelli bobbled it. And the great hustle that time, you got to give Boswell credit for great hustle, but gets there ahead of it. Again, a Texas runner hustling down the line. Elliot Barzilli fields his bunt. They're going to third immediately. You'll see Barzilli go and has the double clutch right there. That's enough time for Brett Boswell to make it to third base. Go sacrifice fielder's choice is the call, and they're loaded. And the head coach makes an appearance on the mound. A lot of times, this is to settle the infield. Well, you saw it right there. He just told Luke and Baker, you're making your pitches. Now this is to get on the infield a little bit. All right, this guy's out here making his pitches. Let's give him a little help. As Brazelli charges here, Greg, you, you, you know, they had the rotation play on. It was really hit pretty well from Gerwitz. He didn't anticipate it. He's there, but you can see double clutched right there. And then the great hustle to get in and ahead. Huge opportunity here for Texas to come right back and answer and gather this momentum. Texas needs to take advantage. It's two innings in a row where two errors have been made by TCU and now no outs and the base is loaded. Tyler ran RBI single his last time up. He is one for one this season with the bases loaded first day back after missing 15 ball games with a broken bone in his wrist. Breaking ball, good one. Outstanding pitch, and it's quickly 0-2 to Rand. Two excellent pitches. Fastball down, breaking ball away and down. Got him. Big strikeout for Baker for the first out of the inning. Fourth of the ball game for the true freshman. Has a chance to get out of this inning with one pitch if he gets a double play, but Texas is back to the top of the order. Jones 0 for 2 as he steps in. He's struck out, fly to center. He's got good speed. Tough to double up. Just misses outside for ball one. Might be the best pitch of the at bat to hit right here. I'm looking for something up as a hitter right here, Greg, that I can get into the outfield. Front door breaking ball, froze Jones. Again, I don't think that's the location Luke and Baker is looking for right there. That's the breaking ball you can hit out of the ballpark. Or put a good swing on and get an extra base hit. Yeah. 
One and two. Contact here. Got to put this ball in play. Twentieth foul ball of the game by Texas hitters. Chopped on the ground. This could be two. Barzelli to third. Bounce the diamond. In time. The five to three unassisted double play. And Texas comes up empty. Loaded. Nobody out. And Baker pitches out of it. Outstanding play. Barzelli just ahead of the diving Jones. Texas with a great opportunity to tie this ball game up at least in the bottom of the fourth inning. They had the bases loaded, nobody out. After the strikeout of Rand, Jones hits the ball down the line. Here comes the throw. Boy, I tell you what, awful close right there. Too close. From that angle, see a better angle here. I tell you what, that is bang, bang, one way or the other. But it, the ball hit if it's hit that speed anywhere else but right there to third base where Barzilli could step on the bag and throw to first Texas will get a run but unfortunately it was hit to him he made the throw and TCU gets out of the inning Morgan Cooper out for his fifth inning of work in a 3 2 ball game line score strange when you look at it three runs on three hits and four errors for TCU for Texas two runs on five hits no miscues in the ball game. Texas trails by one. It'll be the nine, one, and two hitters due for TCU here in the top of the fifth. First pitch of this inning will be the 80th of the ball game for Morgan Cooper. Steinhagen steps in. Popped up right side. Clemens to the wall, back into the stands. Got to keep playing the game. Yes, sir. On both sides, TCU no. really fired up when they came off the field, and rightly so. Bases loaded, nobody out. You don't give up anything. For Texas, you got to keep grinding, too. Breaking ball in there for a strike, and quickly it's 0-2. Good pitch. Good, good breaking ball by Morgan Cooper. That was a slow one. Had some good bite to it. Good one for a strike. You throw that one lower for the out. Shakes a couple of times. Tries to get on the same page, and here we go. There's something out of the zone right here. Caught too much of the zone, got away with it. That's the one you do not want to throw again. That's that's too close. When a hitter takes that good a swing on a 0-2 pitch, that ball's too close to the zone. Travis Duke. Back up for Texas in the bullpen. Didn't get the call, and it's one and two. The fans are mad. Good pitch. Michael Cantu set up just off the plate. Morgan Cooper just dotted the mitt out there, but it was off the plate. High fastball there. Hit out to right over Patrick Mathis's head as he took one step in. Steinhagen with a leadoff double. Ball jumped off his bat, took off on Mathis. This ball gets off the bat. It's kind of tomahawks. The ball up in the zone. It's out there. The step was in for Patrick Mathis right there. Fifth double of the season for Steinhagen. Lead off base runner for TCU in scoring position already. And back to the top of the order to Austin Wade. Wade has walked and scored and grounded to third. Pulls the bat back for ball one.
popped up. Coming on is Rand. And a big out for Morgan Cooper in Texas as Wade unable to move the runner up 90 feet right there. It was going to attempt the bunt. The ball pitched by Cooper was a ball, so Jim Schlossnagel gives the leadoff hitter a chance to move him over, unable to do that. What hunting will step in. Sophomore from Flower Mound. Singled and scored his last time up. Just foul. Had a good swing on that fastball. You can see the numbers. It was all everything. As a freshman. Pretty good feat. All College World Series team as a freshman. Means the big stage doesn't really get to you very much. The 0 1. On the ground, knocked down by Clements. Good play. Underhands. Cooper, big out right there for the second out of the inning. Steinhagen does advance to third. What do you do? Got Scout coming up. Runner on third and two outs. Richard Lefty ready in the bullpen. Skip Johnson's going to come out. I think he'll make a move right here. Morgan Cooper won't like it, but no starting pitcher ever wants to leave the game. He's got 88 pitches. Sure he wanted to pitch more, but that fourth inning really hurt Morgan Cooper throwing 41 pitches. No question about it. We'll give you the information on the new chunker when we come back. When you need to. Morgan Cooper now out of this ball game, four and two thirds, four hits. Three earned runs, a couple walks, a few strikeouts, 88 pitches on the game, responsible for the runner on third base. A lot of pitches in the fourth inning led to the exit and also the lefty in the box coming up. Evan Scout, Texas will go to the bullpen with their lefty, Travis Duke, the senior from Pearland. Leads the Big 12 right now, just making his 14th appearance. He's going to get the ball around the plate. He's had good success against left-handers this season. And the reason he's in the game happened the last inning. Scout right here knew it. It's instantaneous. You can yeah. see that move. He knew he got all of it right there. Three run shot. And that three run fourth. So Duke into the game. Lefty lefty match up here. No gloves. Well, he's a dirt bag. Old time baseball player right there. He's probably a little mad right now that there's no dirt around home plate. He likes to get, get down there and get dirty. The uniform's too clean. Good pitch there from Duke for strike one. Steinhagen at third. You saw the power from Skaug with the ball in. Travis Duke, you want to stay away from him. Count evens. Right-handed hitting Luke and Baker awaits on deck. Texas wants to get this matchup right here. Sophomore from Libertyville, Texas. Misses three times in a row. Like Wellman now in the pen for Texas. He just started throwing right now if there's a want to bring him in for the next hitter I, I don't think he would be ready out 
Out to left. This should do it. Jones over. Puts it away. And that ends the frame. TCU threatens but does not score but holds a 3-2 lead. We go to the bottom of the fifth. We go to the bottom of the fifth. You can see how we got to this point. Season high of errors for TCU has helped Texas, no question. Two infield singles, an infield single, and a single to center. Gave Texas a 2-0 lead. But the three-run shot, difference in the game right now. And then, Greg, unable. We were just talking right there in the break. Unable for Texas to score anything, having them loaded with nobody out. Taking advantage of mistakes. TCU's made four of them. Texas took advantage of the first two and scored the run, but unable with the bases loaded, put the ball in play anywhere but to the third baseman. They turned the double play out of the inning. And Evan Scout with the big blow to the three run homer on the Comal. Twilight here at UFCU Dish Falk Field. Might be difficult to see the ball over the next 10 or 15 minutes on a fly ball in the air. Texas trying to climb back in this one after having a 2 0 lead. Cody Clements will lead it off. A lot of pitches under the belt of Luke and Baker. You would think he might be closing in on the end of his window as well. There's actually someone for the Horn Frogs tossing now in the bullpen. Saw some players out there earlier just throwing air balls. Quickly, Cody down in the count, no balls and two strikes. Jared Jancic tossing, along with Preston Guillory. The 0-2. This is upstairs. Count evens at two and two. There's a big presence on the mound. 6'4, 265. Thought he got the call right there. See him start to walk. Didn't get it. And it's a full count. Through the box, base hit. In the last 20 innings, last actually last 19 innings, Texas has had the leadoff guy on now 10 times. They've been doing a good job at that. 50%. Guerrero steps to the plate. You know what? This is one of the few times I may stay away from the sacrifice right here. Tristan's the ball good his first at bat hit it hard the second at bat got on on an error seeing the ball well tonight he is squaring though up the first baseline an excellent bunt Baker to second to Warner one four on the sacrifice down to second base as the tying run is Cody Clements Mathis singled to drive in a run his last time up. One for two in this one. Patrick has not homered since the UCLA series. He has three on the year. There's an open base here. You've got to be smart as a pitcher and a hitter here. Baker doubt will give in. If you're a hitter, you got to understand that. 
Ball hit well out to right. This has got a chance. Gone. Two run homer, Patrick Mathis, and Texas has a four to three lead. Patrick Mathis showing some emotion when he hit home plate right there. Gets the ball out over the plate. He is a long ball threat. He's proven that this year. You see where the pitch is. Fastball just right down Broadway, and Patrick puts a good swing on it. Gets it out there to the left of 375. I was watching the right fielder, Austin Wade, and right about that point, he just kind of ducked his head and stopped running. I knew that ball was going to make it out, and Patrick Mathis is fired up. He had not homered at home since the first series. Casey Clements steps in, first pitch misses for ball one. Fourth of the year, RBIs 10 and 11 for Mathis. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Morgan Cooper now off the hook. Ball game in the hands of the bullpen now. This ball hit well. Out to right. It's got a chance as well. Off of the wall. Clements on his way to second. Stand up double. Back to back. Extra base hits for Texas. Might be it for Luke and Baker. Two balls hit hard in this inning. So we got the Casey emoji. This ball gets in on Casey a little bit right here. Seeing. Oh, he got some extension on it though. Just out or off the, towards the end of the bat. Ball hits the bottom of the wall. Eighth double of the year, Greg. That leads the club. As Brett Boswell steps in. Eighth hit of the ball game for Texas. It's a big run out there. Activity for real in the TCU bullpen. Side and 2 0. Oh. Luke and Baker in his first five starts had only given up three earned runs tonight and four in a third innings has given up, given up three earned runs. Breaking ball misses downstairs and it's 3 0. Oh. See the numbers right there, Greg. 26 in the third, three earned runs. He has given up four runs tonight, but just three earned in four and a third. Do you give him the green light here? Three and oh, we'll see. I do not. I'm just saying I wouldn't have just because it. You have momentum going right now. The last thing you want to do is not get a good swing and make an out on a 3 0, a second out of any. But he put a pretty good swing on that one. Fouled it off, and it's 3 1. Got in on him, and the count goes full. Michael Cantu awaits on deck. Baker now at 94 pitches in the ball game. Out to center. Steinhagen under. Puts it away for the second out of the frame. Good comeback for Luke and Baker. Down 3 0. Poss possibility of having runners on first and second. Fights back. Gets Brett Boswell. I think we're going to have a pitching change as Jim Swasnagel out. You can see Baker not happy with his appearance here. They're going to go to the bullpen. The right hand. 
Big 12 baseball begins on LHN tonight and continues tomorrow right here at UFCU Dish Falk Field on Friday. Coverage begins at 6 Central. Games are live on LHN and streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. Game two of this series. The senior left-hander for Bryan, Ty Colbrook, will be the starter for Texas. As both teams now into the bullpen, you can see the numbers there, Greg, for both starting pitchers. Almost identical. Luke and Baker did not walk a hitter tonight, but both pitchers four and two-thirds innings. Three earned runs apiece. Now the bullpens will come in and Jared Jansik will pitch for TCU. Jansik into the game, but how did we get to this point? One of the things that happened in this game, three run homer changed the complexion of the game. Texas had a 2 0 lead at that point in the ball game, but Texas comes right back, changes the score themselves with a two run shot themselves. We didn't think the ball would get out of here tonight, and it's jumped way out of here at times tonight. But twice tonight, once Evan Skaug for TCU and Patrick Mathis for Texas. And Luke and Baker not happy right now, giving up those two runs. Still responsible for the runner on second base. See the numbers on Jared Jancic, 6'1", 205, freshman out of Belton, right up the road. Tenth appearance, Greg. One of the things that jumped off the page when I was just looking at their numbers leading into this series is they have some guys in the bullpen have done some good things, but they have allowed a lot of base runners. 18 base runners a lot of coming base out of base. And, and Texas not able to take advantage of that in the fourth inning. Took a big fly this inning to get a couple across. Jancic sinker slider pitcher. One of the things that Jancic's done very well, he's inherited four base runners this season. None of them have scored. As a reliever, you said many times, that was my job. Don't let those guys that are on base score. Well, you took pride in leaving runners on base. Cantu steps in. Upstairs with a bender. Texas has doubled up TCU in hits. They've out hit TCU eight to four. The lead here four three. Right back with another one. That one a strike. Chance set. Cantu brought his hands in that time. Swung over the top of that. He saw the breaking ball. You could see his hands come to his body. Couldn't catch up to it. Try to get Cantu to chase. Yeah. That was a show me fastball. He's going to come right back with that slider away right here. That one in, I think, was a mistake. <laughs> he wants to pitch that ball away. Keep, keep it away from the right handed hitter. That's fixing to ask you, what should we do here? 2 2 now. Oh. Tricked him with the fastball. Right down the middle, Texas. Puts two on the board, takes the lead, four to three. Patrick Mathis. To the top of the six, four, three, Texas lead. We get the opportunity to go down into the TCU dugout and visit with their head coach in his 13th season at TCU, his 15th overall, Jim Schwarzenegger. Coach, you talked to us before the game. You said we played good defense, but at times we've had struggles catching the ball. Yeah, you know, it seems like our errors are on the easiest plays. Uh, so uh, it's disappointing because I felt like Lucan was throwing really well. He was at the bottom of the strike zone. Even the hits he gave up for the most part early were you know, ground ball singles in the infield. So hopefully we can pick him up with the bat. 
Coach, I'm going to go the, with your catcher, Evan Scout. Caught a very good staff last season. What's it like having a fiery guy back behind the plate to lead your staff? Well, it's great. You know, he did a great job at the tail end of the season as a freshman leading a uh, veteran pitching staff. He really kind of started to come into his own, and now he's doing that with a younger bunch. Thank you very much, Coach, for taking the time. All right. Thanks, guys. We go to the top of the sixth in a 4-3 ball game. And Texas goes to the bullpen again, Greg. Blake Wellman. Tall righty. Out of Brenham. You see the numbers on Blake. Tenth appearance. Eleven and two-thirds innings. He's got a good fastball, good breaking ball, good command. I'm not scared to get the ball over the plate. And now his very first appearance in the Big 12. It's a different role for Wellman. It's, he's into the game here. He has done an outstanding job in his last three outings, especially. He's mixed that fastball in with his breaker ball right at the bottom of the zone. And the other part for me, he, he, he comes in and he attacks. He goes right after him. The first pitch, obviously, to a good hitting Luke and Baker was the breaking ball, but he does. He comes in and attacks the zone. Breaking ball stays downstairs in the count evens. Four, five, and six do here for TCU. As we told you earlier, you're thinking, well, how's Baker still in the game? He is listed much like you did when, if you're a Longhorn fan, when Brooks Keystick was here, he's listed as pitcher D8, so he can come out of the mound, off of the mound, but still remain in the ballgame as the DH. This ball hit well out to right. Going back is Mathis against the track, diving, makes a play. That tells you the strength of Luke and Baker and the good play by Patrick Mathis. Inside out by Luke and Baker, and this ball just keeps drifting, keeps drifting on Patrick Mathis. Stays with it, going right along with the fence, reaches up. Right above the padding, right in front of his bullpen mates down there they enjoyed the play it's a good play by Patrick Mathis Josh Watson steps in freshman from Arlington 0 for 1 in this one He's fly deep to right and walked he has two plate appearances Rip down the left field line, fair ball. This is going to go for extra bases. Jones comes up with it, throw to second, not in time. One out double. Pretty swing by Josh Watson. Fastball down and away. Takes it right down the left field line, just inside the white line. Coast into second. Fifth double of the year. 12th extra base hit of the year. He has three triples and four homers to go with those five doubles now. See, these Horn Frogs have been banging. Roselli off to a fantastic start, as we told you. In this ballgame, though, he's 0 for 2. TCU 1 for 7 with runners in scoring position in the ballgame. I'm careful right here. Yes, you'd hate to put the go-ahead run on base, but yeah, he's lurking. 436. You don't get there by accident. This is outside and it's 2 and 0. Chase Sugar. Up for the horns here in the sixth inning with Morgan Cooper starting tonight and Ty Colbreth tomorrow and Kyle Johnston on Saturday. Connor Mays has now moved into that bullpen and should be on the back end of the bullpen. Would think he would be the guy that you would close with. Lots of options here in the first ball game. 
Want to make sure you're on the same page here. And two and Wellman have a short conversation. Tying run 180 feet away out at second base. Two old breaking ball. I got to tell you, I'm catching. I'm calling another one. Let's call a fastball. Look, a semi pitch out. <laughs> breaking ball in the dirt. Your possibility of throwing a wild pitch. Ryan Merrill hitting 321. Even though that's he's got good <laughs> numbers. The 3-0. Was a breaking ball for a strike and not a good one. <laughs> no. Is this, you have the possibility of throwing a wild pitch or hanging it like that. You know if you throw a fastball, a semi pitch out, it's going to be off the plate for ball four. But now, try to go back down with the one out of the zone. But Barzilli's been able to lay off that pitch. 3-1. Challenged him with a fastball at good location, and the count's full. That fastball has some good run down in the zone right there. Got below Barzilli's bat. Cat and mouse game of what pitch to go with. Barzilli has scooted closer to the plate with each pitch. Line to right, in for a base hit. Mathis is to it. Throw is all the way to the plate. Runners at first and third. Patrick's going to have to be careful. It's twice tonight, he's thrown his. Overthrown his cutoff man. Right here, you take a chance. Barzilli going to second base. A good swing on a fastball down. St. Patrick Mathis, a strong throw, but too high for the cutoff man. Even though the runner, even though the runner was not going right there, if you hit your cutoff man, now the runner can advance to second base. Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, there's a lot of things that, that, that go on in a ball game, and, and sometimes you see pitching coaches by the way they call pitches. You almost got the feeling, Greg, that Skip Johnson was going to go to the bullpen regardless what happened right there, and he was going to go to Chase Sugar. So, you know, you're pitching around. <laughs> I, prob I, I probably wouldn't have gone with the fastball there. Yeah, I was thinking – by the first three pitches, they went 3-0 that they were pitching around him. Then he hung the breaking ball for a strike and got another swing. Yeah, I, I would think if you're trying to pitch around him and not get him, let him hit the ball, you would just throw one out of the zone. So going to Chase Sugar right here is Texas to try to get out of this jam in the sixth inning. Well, it's been a ball game, and I think you're going to have to see some more runs by both sides. Both of these teams into the bullpen here in game one of this series. You know, as you look at this, as this stretches out over the course of this weekend, I think it'll be important to find out which bullpen has got the strength. I think that Jim Swassenegger told us before the game, he thought that was the strength of his pitching staff was probably his bullpen. Yeah, they, they've had a good pitching staff for the last five or six years, and this year's the, the same. Uh, the bullpen for TCU is very good. Texas also has a very good bullpen. You could also expect your starters the next couple of days to give you a few more innings than four and two-thirds. Well, they both, they both went deep into this ball game with pitch counts and we're out of the game before they got to the fifth inning. Chase Sugart's into the game. The freshman from Bridge City. He's a guy that can get a strikeout. And this is a strikeout situation, Greg. Came in Tuesday night against UTSA. Had a good inning. Just gave up one hit, but put up a zero. That's what Chase needed to do. He's a 12th appearance. Got a little erratic for a couple of appearances, but right now he is, like you said, Key, the strikeout pitcher and a ground ball pitcher. Get your ground ball right here and be out of the inning as well. A little different role for Chase. He's been in the back end of the bullpen most of the season. 
or all season. But you can treat this like a save situation in this first and third one out and one run lead. I call them gap pitchers. You got to have those guys at some point that maybe get you from the sixth to the eighth where you can think about going to your closer. This is an opportunity for Chase to maybe fill that role. As he comes on here, he'll be facing Ryan Merrill. Merrill, 0 for 2. He's grounded to short and fly to right. See the numbers on the season. He's got decent speed. He's tough to double up. Texas in double play depth in the infield. Tying run 90 feet away now for the Horned Frogs. This could be two. Second for one, the relay in time. And Shergert does his job as he comes in. One pitch, double play ball. And Texas will take a 4-3 lead. Look at this. Four, six, three. The horns are out of it. Shergert is fired up. Start of a new day. Started on Tuesday and then comes back for the conference opener. Both teams have had big moments. None bigger than that right there. That was a big pitch. Good job by Chase Sugar getting the 4-6-3 double play to get out of the inning. Texas emotional tonight as they should be. First game for them in conference play. TCU already 3-0 as they swept West Virginia at home last weekend open up their conference play. Gerwitz one for two in this one. See Jancic has good run on that fastball. And if he can command that pitch it sets up the good slider that he has away from right handers but right now he's falling behind 2-0. Able to drop the breaking ball in there for a strike there. You see with the reliever Jancic in now, Skalg doesn't even give a sign. He's just putting touches. Watch him right here. He just could be first touch, could be last touch. Back to back front door breaking ball starts him out at Gerwitz and brings him back to the inside corner in the count evens. Texas had the leadoff base runner on the second, the fourth, and the fifth. So three out of five innings. Pretty good hack there from Gerwitz. Fouls it straight back. stared at my bat as much as we see <laughs> get that mental focus They're looking for Joe Boo Jensen tried to sell it He's walking off the mound you make the calls on the barrel of the bat didn't cross the plate I would agree with that it has nothing to do with your hands it's the first time I've called you zonk this year well, you picked the wrong curtain and let's make a deal it's <laughs> what you got <laughs> The payoff. Foul tip held on. Second strikeout since coming into the ballgame. That's a strikeout slider from Jancic. The two that he got over the plate for strikes. This one here's the, the out one. Good pitch right there. Tyler Rand will step in. RBI single his first time up. Struck out. So he's one for two with a ribby. Back in the lineup for the first time in 15 ball games. Line to right. Squares that ball up. Good speed on the base pass for Texas. 
That's one thing that Tyler Rand will bring to, to this lineup is speed. Back in the lineup, does a good job here of fighting this fastball off. See the ball start to run in on him. Stays inside it, drops his hands. Barrel the bat, though. That's excellent hitting. You see it, it starts to swing. If you see it in, you have to bring your hands in to get the barrel to it. Back to the top of the order to Travis Jones. Puts on his oven mitt. <laughs> it's just a protective pad for sliding. Protect that hand. Jones bunting up the third baseline. This is a fair ball, it's a base hit. Back to back knocks and Texas with something going here in the sixth. Well, that was a good time to attempt the bunt, Travis Jones. It was the perfect bunt. Barzilli read it, but this ball just almost stops before he can get to it. Not a chance to get Travis at first. Opportunity here for Texas to expand their lead. They have 10 hits now in the ball game. They have out hit TCU. 10 to 6, that's the fourth infield hit of the ball game. And the 10th in the last two games for Texas. Fastball in there for a strike. He's called that same pitch on Cody all night. Cody watches it, he calls it a strike, and then Cody like goes, oh, man. Clements, one for three in the ball game with a run score. Clements by far the leading hitter with runners in scoring position for Texas this season. hack at that one and it's one and two. Break a ball, a good one. Tied him up. And a big strikeout, third for Jensix coming in the game. That was a tight one. Starts out over the middle of the plate and breaks over the inner half. But it had some late snap to it. So Cody gives up on it and it comes right back over the plate. I'm looking for that if I'm Trace Barrera right here. Singled in the first, Barrera did. Reached on an error and scored in the third. Sacrificed in the fifth. One for two with a run scored as he steps in here. Out to right, playable and right by Wade, able to make the play and the inning over. Two thirds of the ball game in the books. Texas leads 4-3. We go to the last third of the ball game here at UFCU Dishbog Field see the recap of the game Boy, it goes back a couple of big moments in this game no question the, the opportunity for Texas to really break it open in the fourth the miscues for TCU they've got to be looking at that going you know we've given Texas quite a bit in this ball game so we're down to nine outs for each side and the bullpen for both sides into the game here eight nine and one due for TCU Warner steps back in on the ground to Barrera. Plants his feet, throw in time. Barrera's made every play, Greg, since moving over to third. Up, respecting the speed of Warner. Gets the chopper, comes up, makes sure he catches the ball and makes a good throw. Doesn't panic. He's got a good, strong arm. Don Hagen will step in. He doubled his last time up. Oh. 
Sure, and Steinhager, Bridge City, not far from Beaumont, but these two guys too far apart to have faced each other. One a senior, one a freshman. Quickly, 0-2. That is an equalizer. But it is for, for Chase. He had lost that pitch, lost command of it. Flying over the top of the Texas dugout. Keep your head up. A few years ago, putting up that screen right up over the dugouts behind home plate has saved a few fans. Yes, it has. 0-2. Hitting with the breaking ball. Tried to overthrow it. And a free pass. Steinhagen took a little offense to it, gave him a, a glare, but that's a breaking ball. If I'm going to get hit, I'll take a breaking <laughs> ball every time. Off the calf. Back to the top of the order. Austin Wade has walked and scored in the fourth. Sandwich that around a ground out and a pop up. Gets in there for a strike. Change up. Haven't seen that very often out of Chase. A good pitch. Tough to steal on is Chase Sugar. He's very quick to home plate. With the changeup, that's one thing you have to get that extra split second. Stay back when you're throwing that changeup with the quick step. Steinhagen with a gigantic lead, both feet out on the green part of the carpet. Three for three in stolen bases. That's a big lead. Pitch out. Well, if you're going to run, are you going to hit and run? After a pitch out, you don't see many coaches go back to back pitch outs. You would do it here. I would think it would be a hit and run. Nothing happening. Ball fouled off. And it's two and two. Just misses. Chance for a strike him out, throw him out here. I am sure that Steinhagen is running here. Got him. Quick throw by Chase Sugar. Catching Steinhagen. Leaning, you see it right here. You see he steps out towards second base and a quick throw and a good tag. Casey keeps it on him for a while right there. That's a big out. Now you're one pitch away from being out of this inning. Changes what pitch selection you have to go after Wade here as well. Sugar comes set. Challenges him with the fastball, fouls it back. Talked about that bridge in the bullpen. Can you bridge it to the closer? Sugar trying to get it done here. Misses downstairs, ball four. Nolan Kingham, talented freshman. Getting ready. That's what this is what Texas would want. Chase Sugar to get out of this inning. Have Nolan Kingham pitch the eighth and Connor Mays pitch the ninth. Four for four is Wade in the stolen base department. And he leads from first. Sugar misses upstairs. Connor, one for three. He's singled in that three run fourth. He's grounded to first. 
wide to center. Sophomore from Flower Mound, Mohanan steps back in. Got a chance here. Throw to first in time. Sugar does his job in the seventh. Seventh inning stretch time here at the Dish. Texas with a one run lead. We're back. Texas leading the Horn Frogs four to three in the bottom of the seventh inning. Patrick Mathis, last time he was in the box, gets a fastball from Luke and Baker. And hits it far. Put Texas in the lead. And get the bench on their feet. That's how you used to hit them. <laughs> yeah. High and far. <laughs> That's how I used to watch them. Luke and Baker, the DH, watching from the dugout is Mathis steps in. Four. Five and six due for Texas trying to add some insurance here. Bottom of the seventh inning. Jessic out for his second full inning work. Came on. In the fifth to get the final out. Out for second inning of work on the start of the inning. That is a tight bender. A couple of, couple of pitchers in this ball game tonight. Right now, good snappy breaking balls. One and two to Mathis. Didn't get the call. Jancic thought he was going to get it, turned his back. You won't get too many more if you keep doing that. That ball was clearly outside and came around the plate if it ever got back to the plate. 2-2. Two, two. That one did. Yeah, that one was on the plate. Third strikeout. Jessica coming into the game. Casey Clements steps in. Clements doubled his last time up. Two for three in the ball game, and he scored a run. Average steadily moving up now, up to 284 on the year. That average way up since the dawning of the glasses. <laughs> yes, it is. Probably close to 100 points. The 0 1. Back to back benders, and it's 1 and 1. There's a good feel for that pitch right now. Going to it a lot. It's too much run on this fastball. Every fastball has been out of the zone, wide right. Got the call there. You're right. He hasn't hasn't commanded his fastball, but he has good command of his breaking ball. score right now for Jessic. He's pitched an inning in a third, allowed two hits. No runs, no earned runs. He struck out four and has walked nobody. Good location with that fastball. 
Let's Casey give a little bit. The count goes full. I would not be looking heater here. It's a good pitch if you have something that you can command away. I mean, he's throwing the breaking ball away, but I'm able to get that fastball over there. Break a ball. Fifth strikeout. Two gone here in the home half of the seventh. Drop it on that back foot as a hitter. You see it in the zone, you start after it, and then you start chasing it, and you never catch up. Casey moved his back foot, thinking it might hit it right there during the swing. Boswell steps in. Same location, same result. Fastball in there for a strike. Quickly, Boswell down an 0-2 count. TCU's been a good team late. Greg, they've come from behind five victories and twice in the last nine days they've come back from three run deficits after the seventh a lot of baseball still to be played here the one two humpback liner to short put away by Merrill and we go with Baker coming to the plate I'm top of the eighth inning here no secret that TCU has played well late in ball games. They've come from behind multiple times. You can see against West Virginia and Rice come back for victories. And five times this season they've come back after the seventh inning when they've been trailing. So it's a baseball team that feels like it's going to win all the time. And Greg, you've been around those teams before where so many times it's just it's just a matter of time for us. We'll get there. Right. It is. And, and I know last year was a whole different team for these Horned Frogs, but during the regionals last year, they were down eight to one in the eighth inning and came back to beat a good North Carolina State team. So they, they never give up. They keep applying pressure. Right now, we are past that seventh inning. So Texas has the one run lead. They will go to Josh Sawyer. We saw him Tuesday. First time he had pitched in a month. Came in and pitched well, got a couple strikeouts against the Roadrunners. Arms feeling well. Has a good fastball. Very good breaking ball. Just making his third appearance of the season. Well, he'll be on here. You would think that Skip Johnson probably will be in a situation where he's going to go left, right, left, right, and try to match up here until you get to Connor Mays, who is starting to toss right now in the Texas bullpen. He's starting to toss, but no other right-hander right now. I guess we might just see Josh Sawyer this in. Well, <laughs> you're gonna let him face Baker. That's the question. Scowl steps in, first pitch break of all in there for a strike. Big blow of the ball game, the three-run shot. Back in that three-run fourth for the Horn Frogs. Good live fastball there in the count evens. 93 on the gun. A little pop to it. So your stuff can be electric. This ball crushed. Is it going to stay fair? Down the line. It's a foul ball. Oh my. This ball absolutely smashed. This, this ball goes over Komal. That's sitting on a pitch and getting it hanging. Just a tad early right there. Just look out towards that right of that gray pole out there. You'll see this ball bounce up in the trees. I think they got your trucks, don't. I'm going to have a dent on my truck. <laughs> white truck right there is mine. Just when you think you're safe. 
The one two. Fastball just gets a piece of it. He does not get cheated. Evan Skalg in that box. That ball, that ball shit a long way right there. <laughs> one and two. Let's keep stay away with the fastball right here. Foul tip. Cantu couldn't hold on to it. He's very upset, but that's just the luck of the draw. Yeah, I mean, you can't expect to catch that. If you go to the breaking ball right here, you have to make sure you waste it away out of the zone. The one two. Upstairs and it's even 94. On the gun that time. Again. I think if you get a fastball away to him right here, you can freeze him. He's still waiting on that curveball. The 2-2. Two -two. Got him. Knocked down by Cantu. Throw to first. Big out for Josh Sawyer. That was a that wasn't the loopy curveball from Josh Sawyer. That, that was more look looked like a slider. Or a waste curveball down. This ball just goes straight down. More of a slider look. He's got a different look right there. Baker with outstanding power steps in. He's one for three on the night. I think Josh is feeling so good with that fastball right now. He's just letting it loose. It's the hardest we've seen him throw. Ever in his collegiate career. Bender there for a strike. Challenged him upstairs. Baker couldn't catch up to it. Outfield extremely deep. No doubles here for Texas. Everybody back against the track. Had to bury that one in the ground. Not sure what that was. 86. Whatever it was, it was a waste pitch. The 2 2. It's not biting, and the count goes full. I think Baker's thinking one thing right here, too. Watson, a left handed hitter, awaits on deck. Out to right, coming on quickly as Mathis. Right in foul territory, able to make the play for the second out of the inning. The ball did come out, but he was trying to make the transfer. He caught it, and then when he went in to get it out of his glove, the ball came out, already called out. It's one of the few times here at UFCU Dish Fog Field you'll see where the ball didn't go out of play with the wind or come back with the wind because right now, there is no win. That ball came straight back down on the line. Trust your routine. The line of the night, the Horn Frogs. Switch hitting. Watson. From the right side. Such an advantage to hit from both sides of the plate. Josh Sawyer trying to make his most impressive inning of work in his collegiate career right now. Almost unhittable right there. It's a free and easy 92. The one two crowd. Trying to root him on here, top of the eighth. To reach back and get a little extra right there. That's when you know you're feeling. I've done that plenty of times where you feel so good, you just want to try to throw it 100 miles an hour instead of the nice and easy 92-93 for a strike. 
The 2 2. Got him. Outstanding frame. Strikes out two for Josh Sawyer. We go to the bottom of the eighth. 4 3, Texas. Bottom of the eighth inning, Texas with a 4 3 lead. Texas taking advantage of the miscues early in the game, and then the Patrick Mathis two run homer, bottom of the fifth, gave them the lead. They're three outs away from securing the victory. They would love to add some runs on the board, Greg, in the entire series last year. At TCU, Texas scored one run. It didn't go well last year in Fort Worth at all. Tonight, they already have four on the board here. It'll be the bottom third of the order due for Texas. Michael Cantu will lead it off. Michael. 0 for 2 in this one. Ball in there for a strike. Look the job Jared Jensen has done. Everything he's been asked to do coming out of the Horn Frog bullpen slammed the door shut on Texas. Recorded five in a row now. And quickly 0 2 on Can 2. He'll be followed by Gerwitz and Rand. The 0 2. Hit pretty well to center, but playable. Going back. Making the play is Steinhagen. So one gone for Texas as Gerwitz comes to the plate. Zane one for three on the night. Single back in the second part of that. Inning where the Texas got on the board to take a one nothing lead. Steinhagen mixing in his fastball more now than we saw him earlier in this outing. Well, Jancic has done an outstanding job. He's, he's like just enough for the fastball, getting it over the plate, but mixing in the slider with it. But this inning going a lot fastballs. 41 pitches in relief. He'll probably be done for the weekend, but he's done his job to this point, keeping his team in the game. The 0-2. Oops. Way outside. Held onto that one a little long. <laughs> so you start to get the feel for one pitch, and <laughs> you throw your first one slider. You haven't thrown it in a while, and just hold on to it a little while. One two got him with a breaker ball sixth strikeout for Jancic since coming into the game and that's the tenth strikeout for TCU pitching here tonight. They had just two did Texas on Tuesday night. Tyler ran RBI single struck out and single two for three his return to the lineup. much you can do with that peeking ahead it will be the six seven and eight hitters due for the Horn Frogs in the night Barzilli Merrill and Warner Barzilli hitting four 28 coming in and this at bat too good offensive player to lead it off Two and one to ran. That 
front door breaking ball. We've seen the right-handed hitters give up on since coming into the game. Well, even more so for Tyler since he does have the protected glove on that hand. The 2-2. Two -two. Got him. 1-2-3 goes Texas. Barzelli will come into the game to lead off, and here comes Connor Mays to close it out. And now for our turning point, brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Happened back in the sixth inning. Chase Sugar come into the game. One pitch, double play, runners at first and third. It was a 4-3 ball game right there, and he came into the game in one pitch, Greg gets out of the inning. Yeah, if he does not get out of that inning right there, and TCU is able to do anything in that situation, it's a tie game or Texas is down a big pitch and two big outs. Coming into the game to close for the first time this season, sophomore from Lake Travis, Connor Mays. Connor. Greg, you mentioned that to me real quickly. He says, you know, it's always a little nervous for the first time you've ever tried to close a game out. And he's getting that opportunity right here. It is I mean, his first appearance as, as a reliever this season. Did it a lot last year, but this is the first game in conference. First time to be out on the mound in, in this situation. You really have to keep keep yourself in check. All right, get that deep breath right there. Don't try to get ahead of yourself. Take it pitch by pitch. Brazzelli will lead it off. He's one for three on the night. One of the leading hitters in the nation as he steps in. Mays first pitch fastball right there for strike one. Merrill will follow Barzelli and then Warner scheduled hitters for the Orange Frogs. Breaking ball misses downstairs in the count evens. The 1-1. One, one. Downstairs. Brazelli singled in his last at bat. When you look at this part of their lineup, Merrill has reached in 11 in a row, but he hasn't reached tonight. And Warner, the third hitter scheduled in this inning, has a nine-game hitting streak on the line. So these guys have been productive for the Horn Frogs. Texas looking for its fourth save as a team this season. Got in on him. Out to right. Coming on quickly is Mathis. Big out for out number one. Big out. Barzilli does Connor a favor right there. Chasing one out of the zone. Fastball up. Gets underneath it. Pop flat to right field for the first out. Ryan Merrill hit into the double play we just talked about. The Toyota. Turning point of the game is last time up. He's 0 for 3. Mays pours it in there for strike one. This is downstairs in the count even at 1 and 1. Few extra breaths right there by Connor. Pop to left. Going back actually is Barrera. This ball looked like it was going out to left, really died. Barrera able to make the let, make the play. And Texas down to one out to get. And TCU down to their last out. As Cam Warner will come to the plate. Warner has hit nine in a row, but 0 for 3 in this one tonight. Don't try to finish it too soon. Both those, see Michael Cantu going out to talk now. Both those pitches just look like 
Connor put a little bit more into a little little bit more head action whipping his head and whipping his body both pitches out of the zone nice job by Michael Cantu to go down there go out to the mound and settle him down Warner has hit two home runs this season driven in 19 pop to right into the stands it's two and one good location there it was up but it, he couldn't get his hands out got it get it got up on him quick the two one same location same result the ball's coming out of Connor's hand very well tonight as well a strike away fans come to their feet here at UFCU dish Falk field The 2 2. Downstairs. I'm not changing nothing. No, you go, go get fastball. Man. The 3 2. On the ground, back through the middle, and TCU's Knight still alive. Warner's hit. Extends his hitting streak to 10 games. Steinhagen, the scheduled hitter. He comes to the plate on the season. He's hit two home runs and driven in 18. Tonight, one for two with a double. Warner on first, six for seven and stolen bases. Very good speed. Big hack from Dane. This is to tell Connor to make sure you come to a stop. No question in my mind as a catcher, he, that was Michael Cantu because he really didn't pause that long right there. A the little antsy. Yeah, come to a complete stop. Right side, Clements has it. Steps on the bag and Texas wins. The first game of the series, Greg, outstanding ball game. Texas took advantage and pitched extremely well they late did. in the game. They did tonight after Car Morgan Cooper comes out of the game. The bullpen did their job. That man right there, Patrick Mathis, did his job. And now for our most dependable player of the game, powered by Chevy Silverado, it is Patrick Mathis. With that two-run homer in the fifth, he drove in three. That's the difference in the game. But, Greg, going back to the fact is Texas played clean defense. They did the things they needed to do. They got their leadoff guy on, especially early in the game, and then found a way to get extra base power. And that was the difference in the game. They did a very good job. In the fourth inning, they left the bases loaded with nobody out. Didn't score a run, but did not give up. Stayed in the game, scored the runs, and got the win. Our final score here tonight, Texas 4, TCU 3. Tune in tomorrow for game two of this series. Coverage begins right here at 6 Central. Now, for the eyes of Texas.